I got to believe there's a major struggle in the beginning. Major Absolutely. struggle. Was your sure. wife always standing right by you? Always, man. Always. And the reason I ask you this is because there's a lot of people out there. Mm-hmm. And God has a purpose for them. And they might even know that. But Absolutely. there's somebody who they lay with every night. Somebody who, by all accounts, I guess, love them. But they're telling them, do something else. You got to put food on the table. You got to do this. You got responsibilities. And you out there trying to trace this so-called dream of yours. What do you say to those people? Mm -hmm. I would say um, go in prayer with them. Like with me and my wife, I knew right away once I started traveling, I was like, man, it's going to be a lot of sacrifice. I was like, man, I'm going to miss a lot of things. Right? Like if I'm trying to get to a certain point to where I'm trying to make this a career, I'm trying to impact people, I'm trying to take care of my family financially, like we got to establish what it requires. And I prayed about it with my wife, you know, deep. We, we discussed, you know, and I made a lot of mistakes, right? I want to be sure to say that. I made a lot of mistakes, right? Can I took talk a about lot of trips. Those? Absolutely. I took a lot of trips when I probably shouldn't have. Right. I went a lot of places when I probably shouldn't have went and I probably should have stayed home. Right. But because I'm in it and I'm looking at it in terms of, oh, man, sacrifice is a part of the job. Right. I need to do this to get here. I need to take this opportunity to get here. And my wife, just being a supportive wife, she's going to be like, okay, cool. Right. And one time I took an opportunity. I think it was with the New York Knicks. And I'll never forget it was on my wife's birthday. And the way it was set up, we and her talked about it. And this you know, don't I was sound gonna, good, Ink. Oh man. I don't know where you're about ain't. to go, but it don't sound it, good, brother. It ain't, right? <laughs> no, I'm telling you. So I was like, I'm gonna send my wife and her grandmother to the spa, you know, that morning. I'm gonna set up some things for them to do because it was set up to where I could get in early, speak, and then I could get back you know, probably early afternoon and we good. We had the rest of the day to roll and we did, right? And we had a beautiful time that day and we were discussing something, you know, a few days later and she blew up, right? Just blew up and and I knew that was that, right? I knew, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear, I didn't hear the silence of her saying, yeah, you can go, but don't go. Mm-hmm. I just heard, okay, she said, I can go. I'm going to go. And then if I speak to the Knicks, and then this opened me up in the NBA and get me here, and I didn't catch it, right? And when she blew up, I knew exactly what it was. I knew it was that you left on my birthday, even though, you know, you got back, you still left because you were trying to build and get to a certain point in your career. And when I did that, I got it, you know, automatically I got it. And it was a lot of mistakes, like I said, on the front end. But luckily, man, it was a lot of prayer as well. And it was a lot of communication. And so we was able to sustain that and endure it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I want to take a step back because it's something I should have asked you a little while ago. How long did it take for your career to start picking up? Man, I would say um, it took a few years. I I would probably say to where it picked up like consistently the way I wanted. I mean, don't I was, go there. To, to where it picked no, no, up, no. where it started to at least provide income for you and your family. To where gotcha. it wasn't just a dream anymore. It's This is real now. I can actually earn a living at this. Yep, I would say uh, about two years to where it got to a point to where I started earning income, but I would say to where it got to a point to where it was consistent and my pricing structure to get to where I wanted it to be, it was a little bit over three years to where I could start to build a life out of it. But I would say two, I was spotting here and there, you know, on a pretty pretty consistent basis. But three, I was able to aim a little bit better and structure my life out a little bit better around it. Yeah. And the reason I ask you this is because our audience is, is primarily people who are entrepreneurs, is people who want to get ahead in life. 
And what I notice is people they tap out too early. They they they, so, they you know they they lose that drive somewhere in there because the money is not coming in fast as they thought it would. So when, when when I hear stories like yours and I got to believe the money is secondary. Yes, I know that you 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 had to feed your family, but you are living a, a higher purpose. Like I told you earlier, you have really inspired my life. But for anybody out there who is trying, and they're trying, and they're trying, but they make a little money here, they might not see another check for another 60 days, what advice would you give to those people? Absolutely. I would tell them, man, stay the course. Like I had one of my buddies, he, he started speaking. And, you know, a few months went by, I would say like eight months. And he was ready to tap out. And I'm like, bro, you just been in it eight months. Like, like they don't even know you yet, right? Which is cool. But I'm like, more importantly, you just been at it eight months, right? Like lay the groundwork, lay the foundation, learn the business, establish relationships. Go certain places and speak for free. Like, get out there more, right? But what it does is when you put in the sacrifice, when you put in the time, when you put in the sweat equity, when you put in all these hours, what it does is on the back end when the two and the three years go by, it makes it even sweeter. But I firmly believe in what you said. A lot of people tap out too early, right? A lot of people check out too early because they get to a certain point. I always say people don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do it. Stop there. Right? Please say Absolutely. that again slow. I love that yeah. quote for you. Just, just rewind that back. Yeah, man. Like, people don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do it. So and that's, that's so important, man. Like, I got into this business to impact people. I got into this industry to be true and authentic and impact people's lives. And I got to constantly stay cognizant of why I got into this industry. Constantly stay cognizant of that because that's my number one priority and that's the most important. And I think along the lines of people forget that sometimes, right? When people start getting into entrepreneurship, they forget why they got started, right? And I think it's important to always revert back to that and use that as a driving force. I love that quote. I think it's such a beautiful gem. And for anybody who's watching this on video or listening to this on podcast form, that is something that you should rewind and listen to that every morning. Because if you can remember why you got into it to begin with, that will give you the motivation. That will give you that extra kick that you need day after day when you don't see no doors opening, when you don't see no momentum happening, just remembering, why did I do this to begin with? Going back to that place, that love, that, that feeling that you had, that's the driver. I love that so much. Got to ask you this, and I've heard you answer it before, but I, I want to ask you because my audience might not know your story in detail. Knowing what you know now, you mentioned several guys who you know and love who went to the pros. Your career was cut short. If you had the opportunity to do it all over again and God said, look, I will, knowing what you know now, I'll take you back in time and I'll give you that NFL contract, what would you do? I wouldn't take it. Um, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing, man. You know, now because you know how when you get on the other side of something, present, you start looking back at the journey and you start looking back at the little pockets of the situation. You start looking back at the people that got affected and impacted and you kind of start weighing the adversity and weighing what you wanted from the situation. Like if I can go at that play today, man, I'd go at it the exact same way and I wouldn't change it. You know, because of what happened in my life, it was pretty cool. Right, it fortified my faith. I, I believe it made me a better person. Right, I think now I'm a better father because of my injury. I'm a better husband, better son, better friend. But what it did in the people's lives that were connected to me is priceless. Right, like my friends, man, a lot of them came to know Christ. Like they gave their lives to Christ because of what happened to me. Wow. Like, you know, my father, you know, like his soul got saved. Like all this stuff, like, my mother and father repaired their relationship. 
Like, man, they, these are things that you can't put a price on. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.